Mike Gibson and Usman Babar here from Sky 2015. Usman, you just presented the results of the uh, Prometheus study. Tell us a little bit about what the question was you're trying to answer and the design of the trial. Well, thanks, Dr. Gibson. Um, the Prometheus study uh, is basically a study looking at real-world uh, patients, those patients who are not usually enrolled in clinical trials, and trying to understand in a real-world context how is Prasagril being used, uh, what are the determinants of Prasagril use, and also what's the safety and efficacy pro profile of Prasagril as uh, compared to pras uh, Prasagril as compared to Clopidogrel. Sure. And that was the basic fundamental question we were trying to ask with, uh, with this study. And uh, how many centers did you have? What was the scope? So what we ended up doing actually is we used a little bit of a novel approach to conduct this study. We went to different uh, medical centers across the United States. We found eight centers. Uh, each of these centers maintains their own database uh, on patients who come in with uh, acute coronary syndromes, get treated with clopidogrel or prasugrel. And these centers provided us data on their patients between 2010 and 2013. And in total, in this manner, we were able to uh, generate a data set of 19,914 patients, wow. all of whom were treated with either clopidogrel or prasugrel, underwent PCI with stent implantation. All those data were then sent to us at Mount Sinai, where we aggregated, harmonized, and generated one unified patient-level pool data set. And the primary endpoint of this analysis was the uh, rate of MACE, which was defined as death, MI, unplanned revasc, or stroke at 90 days from the time of PCI. And um, how about the quality? How confident are you of your ability to ascertain events from this kind of electronic medical record or database? Uh, yes, I, uh, it's a great, great question. Um, the method that we use to obtain these data certainly has certain advantages and disadvantages. The advantage uh, is that it was very efficient. Uh, we were able to leverage the existing resources that existed at all the academic medical centers and allowed us to construct a data set within a very short time frame. Less than 12 months, we were able to put this, these data together. By the same token, uh, we had to rely on the quality of the data that existed at the sites. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for example, if uh, sites did not routinely do social security death index searches, for example, we weren't able to go back and get that information. So there were certainly uh, certain advantages and disadvantages, um, and we try to do our best to uh, minimize um, any of the uh, biases that can occur in this kind of uh, analysis and, and study design. So did they search for you know ICD-9 codes or something to say someone had been re -hospitalized? But what if they got rehospitalized uh, outside the country or yep. outside their system? How did yep. you know they had an event? So, in general, most of the centers um, uh, collect data on their patients after PCI through a multitude of mechanisms. Um, these might be through routine patient phone calls, these might be through return visits primarily at their own site. Um, it may be So this is more than your usual hospital kind of yes. database tracking, whether they were readmitted or... Exactly. Yeah. We did not, this was not based on ICD-9 codes, this right. was based on what they had um, available to them at their, at their centers. And I can tell you uh, that based on, we uh, assumed we were going to get a MACE rate of about 8% or so mm -hmm. at 90 days, and I certainly think we did collect a reasonable number of events because our MACE rate actually was a little bit higher than that at 90 days. So I do think we were able to collect events, but certainly uh, caution has to be taken in terms of misclassification of, of, right. of events. Um, and, and, um, and, and again, ascertainment bias in any kind of retrospective study. But the design. lesson, as always, is that the event rates in the real world are always higher than exactly. in randomized trials, right? Exactly correct. And how about any kind of comparisons between clopidogrel and prasugrel? Absolutely. So what uh, we found is that at 90 days, the unadjusted um, uh, benefit uh, favored prasugrel in, uh, by about 42% relative reduction in MACE. In other words, the uh, prasugrel-treated patients um, um, had a substantial benefit uh, compared to their clopidogrel-treated counterparts. Now, um, it's also important to point out that what we found is that the profile... But these were probably younger patients, exactly. heavier patients. Uh, That's exactly what I was... Mm -hmm. Right. In terms, of, in terms of what we found, we noted, number one, that the overall use of prasugrel was actually not that common. So only one out of five patients in this 19,900 patient data set actually received prasugrel at the time of PCI. So only 20%. In terms but they of the, had excluded people with prior stroke or TIA. And, exactly. Uh, they and, excluded the little old ladies who were exactly. under 75 kilograms and you're exactly yeah, right and yeah. the patient profiles were remarkably different uh, the patients who ended up receiving prasugrel in this data set were much healthier they were younger less diabetes less renal disease less anemia compared to less their counterparts. Diabetes. that's odd because really that's 
a sweet spot uh, for press girl. I mean, it is, yeah. and I think one of the insights from the Prometheus study is that it allows us to help better understand what influences therapeutic decision making at the time of PCI. And you're absolutely right, a traditional classical marker of risk such as diabetes mellitus was actually less common in the prostrate treated patients, suggesting perhaps that what's driving us to make decisions may be more driven by concerns about therapeutic toxicity in terms of bleeding rather than therapeutic benefit. But we can't say that the way Prasgirl is being used in the real world is effective. Doctors are selecting patients in an appropriate way and having good outcomes. Yes, and I think, um, I, I certainly believe that our, the, the study does suggest that. Again, we found at 90 days, the unadjusted benefit was very large in favor of Prasgirl. Now, we had to do a lot of methods to account for the baseline differences. The primary method we used for adjustment was propensity stratification, and we did a multiple other methods, uh, including inverse probability weighting and other, other approaches. We found that after you adjusted, um, the benefit uh, was an 11% reduction in MACE at 90 days in favor of Prasgirl with a non-significant p-value of 0.17. Um, we, and that was similar for, um, for myocardial infarction as well. Uh, there was a large unadjusted benefit with Prasigrel. When we adjusted, it was attenuated to about a 15% reduction. That was non-significant. Interestingly, for bleeding, uh, we found, again, the healthier Prasigrel patients bled less, unadjusted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you adjusted, however, the hazard ratio was essentially 1.0, right on the line of unity. So in aggregate, the findings suggest that the way we're using Prasigrel in this real-world context is in such a manner that the benefit on the ischemic site is modest, it's attenuated, not at the level we see in Triton Timmy 38. Nevertheless, we are also not exposing patients perhaps to the same level of harm. When we looked within Triton, we did find that if you get rid of the people over 75, yeah. get rid of the little old ladies, if you get rid of the prior stroke TIA, that population of people, about the 80% that remained, didn't have really that much excess bleeding. It sounds like this real world look mimics uh, that kind of analysis. Yes, and I think in, in many respects our findings are concordant with the prospective translate ACS registry wherein they also demonstrated large unadjusted benefits and then when you adjusted away the differences the benefits were minimized and, and attenuated um, and I think we're seeing in, in many regards a similar similar finding with, right. uh, with uh, the Prometheus study. Excellent. Well congratulations. 90,000 patients, 19,000, 19, 19, yes. 19, still a lot of patients. It's a lot of patients, uh, a lot of work, yeah. and uh, it was right. um, and, and it was a pleasure to be, be here and have an opportunity to present it. Yeah, well, you did a great job. Thanks Thank you so much. much. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us here live from Sky 2015.